forgot one, call it out. Thank you, God. For your who? Willow, oh, thank you, God, for your spirit moving at Willow Oak Baptist Church. Your spirit moving at New Hope. Independent Baptist Church. Glory to you, God. Hallelujah. Your spirit land. Thank you that one hope is a city set upon a hill which cannot be hid. Thank you, God, that one hope is a town flowing in your spirit, Lord. In your spirit. In spirit and in truth, this town will worship you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we also decree a thing, and it shall be so. God, we call those things which be not as though they were. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God, for healing for this town and for everybody in this building right now. Total healing. I receive it, Lord. Thank you. Ooh. I receive it. Thank you. Thank you, God. That's the song I've been singing all morning, man. You didn't even know it. That's how the unity of the Spirit works. <laughs> Just need to sing this.
church come together here, Lord, to do special assignment for you in this town, but not only in this town, it's the people of this town and the people who come from all over, they're going to come from all over the place to this town. So they don't have to be from this town. The people coming to this town, oh God, I see them being set free. I see them, God, being changed, all transformed. Thank you. By your power, God, everything becomes new in your power. Your mercies, your compassions, they fail not. They're new every day. Jesus, who woke up this morning needing mercy from God? If you did, receive it right now. It's new today for you. It's new today. The Bible says that in Lamentations, His mercies and His compassions, they don't fail. They're new every day. Oh, but I used up a lot of mercy. I was bad this week. I did this this week. I did this in my past. I used up a lot of his mercy. It's new every day. It's new. Your past. If you've repented of your past and you're following Jesus, go on, forget it. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Thank you, God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. times he talks to you. Yes. These deep times of worship, you'll hear him. If you listen. like us to perhaps close out our singing time Whatever, however the ladies will do it it's in your book, set it fire
but you've never committed to follow Jesus Christ, then it's time for you to take action and make that decision that the rest of your life might be blessed of God. Keep them close. Number three, if you have committed to follow Jesus Christ, you are saved, as the world, church world would say, but you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's time to take action. It's time for action. You need to receive the Spirit of God in fullness. Number four, if you have already committed to Christ and been saved and you've been born of the Spirit, baptized in the Holy Ghost, but you find that you're not hungering and thirsting after God, the way that you think you should, then it's time to take action and become passionate about Him. And number five, if you have already done all of these things and you already feel passionate about God, you don't stop there. It's time for action for you to get even closer to God and more set on fire for Him. Now don't open your eyes just for another minute. I want you just to ask him, which one of those is me, God? You probably already know when you heard it. And it's for nobody here to judge because we don't know your heart. Only you and God here. God, which one am I? Because God, it, that one that, that, that was said that was me, Lord, I want to take action. Right now I speak just a blessing over everybody here that this word is going to penetrate their hearts and their their minds, their souls, their spirit man. And, and this word is going to take action to enable us to take action. Thank you, Lord. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Thank you, God. What just happened is between you and God, I don't know where you stand. You, you can't even judge somebody you see me up here preaching. You don't, you don't know where I stand. I say that because Juanita Bynum famous Bible teacher. I've got two or three of her CDs over here. That's an anointed woman of God. She wrote a book called Matters of the Heart where she said she'd been preaching the gospel for years and realized she wasn't really saved. She didn't think. She knew the word. She could preach the gospel, but she said her heart was not really right with God. Excellent book. Now this was, this was a preacher who said this. I have a friend on Facebook. I won't name her. But last night, I can name Juanita Bonham. She wrote the book about herself. But my friend on Facebook, about my age, she said I've been teaching. She said, I want to thank God for my anniversary. She put it on Facebook, so she was proud of this. I want to thank God for my anniversary. Six years that I've been a Christian. And I'm thinking, I knew her way back then. That girl was teaching Sunday school. She said, I taught Sunday school for 20 years. I was in a Bible-believing church. I pretended like I was a Christian. She said, but I realized in 2010, one night, when there was a move of God, I wasn't really committed to Christ. I wasn't really saved. She'd been teaching Sunday school all these years. She said, in 2010, though, God got a hold of me. She said, so I want to thank God for my birthday, which was yesterday. You can't judge where I stand. I can't judge where you stand. But we all, I feel the Spirit of God so real. We all fall into one of these categories. And if if we have identified which one of us is us, it's time to take action. You may not want to take action, but it's time to take action. I want you to turn to a scripture. In the book of Romans. Romans chapter 13. This scripture talks to two Christians. So if there's somebody in here that's not a Christian, today should be the day that you take action. It's time for action for you to move and become part of the body of Christ. But this word from Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 14, this word is for Christians. You say, well, well Leslie, I'm not sure I am one. Well, you still need to listen to it because there's good stuff here for everybody. And I believe in everybody in here. If we're not Christians, we're going to leave Christians. Now, while you look at that, hold that open. When you hear somebody say that it's time for action, to take action, you know, the first question is, well, what do I need to do? Okay, God, what do I need to do? 
Well, I just told you some suggestions for what we can all do. But sometimes God moves in very mysterious ways. There were times in ancient Israel when there was an enemy coming against them, and he told them, you go fight them. You literally go to war. You take your weapons, and I'm going to be with you, and you are going to prevail in this battle. There were other times, Second Chronicles 20 is an example, when the enemies were all around, the children of Israel, the people of Israel, and they're like, what do we do, God? You want us to go out, you know, with our bow and arrow? Do you want us to go out with our swords and our shields? And God said, no. He said, stand still. He said, you're not going to have to fight in this battle. You set yourself, you stand still, and you watch me work. Now, y'all remember that story. They literally went forth into battle against the enemy, Praising God. They sent forth their praisers just saying, Praise ye the Lord, for His mercy endures forever. That's the craziest thing you may have ever heard to go fight a battle. But when they did that, it so confused the enemy that the enemy started fighting each other. There were, there were three different armies camped around them. They started to fight each other. And Israel won the battle without having to fight at all. This is why it is so important to have the Spirit of God within you so that you hear Him say what to do. What do you want me to do, God? Do I need to go into spiritual warfare and just start casting down strongholds? Or do I just need to stand still and praise you and say, God, I trust you and I know that you are working this for my good and I'm just going to praise you because praise is a powerful weapon. This is why it's so important to hear the voice of God tell you what to do when it's time for action. One way that you can know exactly what to do to take action is get in this Word. Here it is. This is given to us. This is Him. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God. This is Him living and breathing in this Word. That's why it's so key that we get in this Word and know what He's telling us. So if you say, I don't know, Leslie, what to do to take action, get in that Word. And you just ask Him to quicken it to you by His Spirit, and I guarantee you He's going to tell you what you need to do. Your path may not be my path. There are going to be times when we people who believe in supernatural healing are going to say, God, what do you want me to do? And He's going to say, go to the doctor. Let the doctor tell you what's going on with you. There's going to be times He says that to some people of faith who say, well, God, I stand on divine healing. Go to the doctor. There's going to be other times he tells you, don't go to the doctor. They're not going to be able to tell you what to do. You trust me. It's so important to be led by the Spirit of God when it's time for action. What to do. Now, Romans 13, 8 through 14. This is a scripture that I just, honestly, I stumbled upon it last night. I wasn't even looking for it. I already had the time for action sermon. But you're loud. I read this last night. Too. Did you really? Amazing. That's how God works. It was only last night he gave the scripture to me. And it's perfect. I want somebody to read it. Um, I'd rather hear an NLT or an NIV first. Who's got that? I'll read it. Sure, go ahead. 8 through 14? Yes. Oh, nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For adultery, for the commandments say, you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others, so love fulfills the requirements of God's law. This is all the more urgent for you to... For you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up for our salvation is near now, or is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone, the day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on shining armor of right living. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties or drunkenness and or in sexual promiscuity or immoral living, or in quarrel, quarreling and jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and don't let yourselves think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Oh, that's a good version. I had not actually read that. Is that NLT? NLT, yeah. Has anybody got a version that says something different you really feel of God to call out? 
Anything different that you're feeling? We're just getting, it's just getting good. <laughs> All right. Now, I, I hate to chuckle when I read scripture, but sometimes something just hits you. When he was reading that, I was just thinking, we're in Romans chapter 13. So come on. Romans chapter 13. And at the end, when you get to about verse 13, okay. Here are your typical Christian. Your holy Christian. Reading the scripture. You're hearing all this stuff. Don't you participate in wild parties. Hallelujah, I don't do that. You know, that's the way a lot of Christians are. I don't do that. I'm holy, holy, holy. Then it says, don't you participate in sexual promiscuity. I'll never do that. And you keep going. Did you notice how it ends? I promise you there's something in the scripture for every single person sitting here. Because I found myself guilty of some of this stuff. Even now. Leslie, are you going to wild parties and you're sexually promiscuous and you're in uh, drunken rioting? No. I promise you I'm not. But that last part. Let's look at verse. Hmm. This might hit some of y'all too. At the end of verse 13, not in strife and envying. Strife and envying. Do you know how many Christians live their lives with strife and envying? I found myself guilty, especially of the envying. I, I literally had to repent before God and say, I have envied this in another person. I have envied this. Sometimes it was something good, really, that I was envying. And I was thinking, why should they have that? I, I want that. I want it. I want that. That is just as bad as everything else that was listed. We have to turn from these things. Did you notice what it said? It said, in the King James, it says it's high time. I think that's a beautiful expression. It's high time that we do something. It's time to awake out of sleep. We, you say, well, I'm not asleep. Are you not? Because are you taking action? It's time for action. Are you doing what you know God has told you to do? I'm talking to me as much as I'm talking to you. Are you doing it? You know, every single one of you that just went through that exercise we did a minute ago where we closed our eyes, something in that applied to you. It's time. You say, well, I heard him say that in 1972, that it was time and the end of the world was coming and ain't nothing out. You're closer now than you were then. This was written back in what? Who knows? 40, 50, 60, 70 A.D.? I don't know when they wrote this book of the Bible. But notice what it says. I'm going to read you the King James Version. Verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. It is high time we awake out of sleep. Awake, old sleeper. If there's anything I'm saying to you today, I'm telling you that like this shirt says, it's time for action. Not just for Captain America. You know, I had my kids laugh at me for this, but they know it's true. They believe what I'm getting ready to say. Alan and I were watching the Avengers. I don't know, you've heard this, but not all of you have heard it. I'll say it again. Three years ago, maybe, and I love superheroes. I just do. I like the comic stuff. Captain America is my favorite, as you've already heard. But when we're watching the Avengers, I mean, it's, it's high time. I mean, the portal's open, and here comes evil trickling down. You know, they're coming down to earth to take over, and, and you're thinking, what are we going to do? What do we do? We call them Captain America, the Incredible Hulk. You know, here, here's Iron Man flying through the air, and they have to close that portal. Just ruined it if you hadn't seen it. But they have to close that portal so that evil does not prevail upon the earth. Well, there's a great message there that goes right along with what we're talking about here. And when I'm watching that movie, I'm not thinking about God. You want to know the truth? I wasn't. I was thinking about that movie. Oh, what's Iron Man going to do? Oh, is he going to live when he comes back through the... Oh, come on. You know, what about Robert Downey Jr.? It was Iron Man. And all of a sudden, I heard God speak to me. He said, what you all are doing in Walnut Cove is Avengers big. 
I literally don't remember the next part of the movie because I so clearly heard God tell me that, that I, uh, uh, I don't even remember if I told Alan that, but my face probably looked about like it does right now. I heard him say, what you are doing in Monaco is Avengers. Big, big, big. This little old town? Who cares about this little old town? Just like the Bible said with Jesus. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? When they were talking about Jesus. Can anything good come out of Walnut Cove? Yes. This is Avengers big. This is so big. The move of God that we're believing for. That all of a sudden people around the world are going to know about Walnut Cove. They already do. We're already corresponding with some people in Europe who've heard what's going on in Walnut Cove and what we're believing for. People, this is Avengers big. And if it's Avengers big, it's time for action. Now, I told my children that, and of course, they chuckle at me as a mama. Mama thinks, you know, it's a I don't. Big. This is super hills. Thank you, buddy. So, <laughs> one day, we were here praying with Jules. Jules was a little pastor, not pastor, minister who was here. She's in D.C. now as a chaplain. Well, Jules was here, and she decides we're going to pray through the house. Jules was a you know, fiery little woman. So we're praying through this well here. Jesus, you know, thank you, God. Any unclean spirits, we cast you out. We're going through the house. And I hear Jules go upstairs. And she gets in this room right above us where our classroom was, Rachel and Abigail the other night. She's up in the green carpeted room. And she comes running out, and my kids are downstairs. Megan's on the couch. I don't know why Megan went prayer with us. Maybe she was. <laughs> but nonetheless, Jules comes running out of that room. She says, Leslie, Leslie, this is so big. And Jules is not from here. You want to know the truth? Jules couldn't stand Walnut Cove. All she wanted the whole time she was here was God to get me out of this town. <laughs> she was here. She had surgery on her eyes and she couldn't drive, so she had to come live with her sister in Walnut Cove. All she could think about was get me out of here. And here she comes going, Leslie, this is big. Do y'all know how big this is? Do the people here, y'all have no idea? She was just so excited she wasn't even making sense. And I'm just looking at her going, yes, Jules, this is Avengers big. And when I came back down the stairs, Megan was on the couch chuckling because she remembered. You remember this night, don't you, when Jules did that. This is Avengers big. I don't know who you are. I didn't plan to go with it this way, but we'll go here. I don't know who's the Hulk, who's uh, Iron Man, who's uh, the Black Widow, or I don't know who's what. But I'm telling you, you all have a role to play in this micro-church movement. You have a role, and it's time for action. You say, well, what's the first thing I ought to do? What's the first thing we read in that? Look at that first verse. What stands out to you? Number one. This is verse eight. Love one another. The foundation of everything is love. Faith, faith, faith. We are part of the, you know, Pentecostal charismatic faith movement. I got faith that she's going to be healed. I got faith he's going to be healed. Faith, faith, faith. That's good. I love faith. But you know how faith works? By love. Faith works. By love, the Bible says. Love is the key. That's the foundation. Remember a few weeks ago when we preached that tough sermon about the fruit of the Spirit? We had to go home and say, I'm doing, okay, I got a few of those things coming out of me, but I may not always have that joy, peace, that gentleness, that meekness, that patience. But that was a tough one. But you know what the foundation of all that is? Love. You get the love of God going on in your heart and in your life. You're going to love your enemies. You're going to love the people who've done you wrong. You're going to love them. How is this possible? Because it's supernatural. It's totally supernatural. Am I totally there yet? No. But I, I just have to be honest. But I'm getting there. You know why? Because I'm decreeing this thing. I'm decreeing this thing. I will love my enemies. I'm decreeing this thing that I will love everybody with such an unselfish love that I'm not even thinking about my will. But what is God's will for that person? That's the foundation of it all. So when I tell you that it's time for action, the first thing you need to do is get in contact with the God who loved you so much that he gave his life for you. And when you realize that and begin to flow in that, his love is going to so flow through you that that's the first big step of what you do to take action. What else do you need to do? We just read it right here. Go all the way down to verse... Go. Let's start at 11 again. And that knowing the time, the 
the time there? There are two different times in the Bible. There's chronos time and there's kairos time. Chronos means, you hear, you hear chronological in that, in the root? Chronos, chronological. Chronological time, ticking all along this day. Then there's another kind of time called kairos time, which means a set time and a pointed time. This is that one. Knowing the time, that means set time, the appointed time. You people, we should know the time. Well, if you know the time, let's go on and see what it says. And knowing the time, that now it is high time. That means it's past time for us to wake up. It's time for action. It is high time to awake out of sleep. And that word awake, I like to go back to the Greek because this is all English we've got, but it was originally in Greek. When you go back to the Greek, that awake means stir yourselves up. That means shake yourself to the point that you're stirred up with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. When you wake up and you arouse yourself out of sleep, all of a sudden you realize when you're awake what it's time for. What is it time for? When you awake out of sleep. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believe the night is far spent. The day is at hand. It's almost dawn, people. Alan told me on the way here this morning, he said something about praying for the world. To say, just like with Sodom and Gomorrah, when Abraham, when they were praying and saying, spare the city, God said, I'm going to destroy it. That's an evil city. Those cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm going to destroy them. And they were praying, please, please, if there's just ten righteous people, can you spare the city? Can you spare it? Alan said, maybe we should be praying, God, spare this earth. Spare this earth, God. I have friends and loved ones who don't know Jesus. Do you? I have relatives who aren't saved, do you? I'm longing for him to come back. I'm longing. Oh, I'm, I think about it. I just, ooh, like a kid at Christmas again. I can't wait to see him split the eastern sky. We're going to see him. I got loved ones that aren't saved. It is time for me to take action and do what I need to do. What if what? We couldn't have taught the kids a better verse the other night. Again, not my will, but yours be done. My will is to enjoy life. Life is good. I like life. I like to go to baseball games. I like to play with my children. I like to go see movies. I plan to go to a movie this week, God willing. I like to do these things. Well, none of those things are necessarily bad things. But what comes first? He's going to make sure you have time to do things you love to do. I get to go to baseball games, but that can't be my life. I get to go to movies, but that can't be my life. What's your life? Are you able to say, not my will, but yours be done, God? Yours be done? Because if you're able to say that, you're going to be able to do what this verse, these verses tell you. You're going to awake. And here's what you're going to do in verse 12. You're going to cast off the works of darkness. You're going to cast them off. Now there's another scripture that uses the same Greek word there, that cast off. In Greek it's one word. It's Hebrews 12.1. Anybody just, don't look it up. Does anybody just know what that is? Hebrews 12.1. You remember where he talks about running the race and laying aside every weight and the sin that so, so easily besets us? That's Hebrews 12.1. In that verse, when it says, lay aside every weight and every sin, that's a very calm word, lay aside. It looks like I'm doing this. I just laid it aside. The actual word in Greek is the same word here as cast off. And it's a violent thing. It means you cast it off. You know, I need my glasses, so I'm not going to cast that off. But you just cast it away. We need to do that, people. Cast off the things that are weighing you down. What's weighing you down? What's holding you back? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Shannon was talking the other day something about Medea. I've never seen Medea but a time or two. But didn't she say sometimes people in your life, you need to let them go? Let them go. Let them go. I remember that line from working with her for years. But the thing is, sometimes it's not people. Sometimes it's things. In our life, we gotta let them go because they're weighing us down. Think about it. I gotta get to that. Let's say I gotta get to that kitchen in an, in an analogy here before a certain time, and I'm trying to get to that kitchen. And there's a time frame here, people. 
but I've got all this stuff on me. It's weighing me down. I'm trying to carry this, and I'm trying to carry this, and I just, oh, i got to stop and pick up that as I go. All of these things are hindering me from getting to my goal, which is in that kitchen, and i got to get there before the time is up. you got to get there, people, before the time is up. Time is almost up. It really is. It's almost up. We've got to get there. We've got to get to his place for us before the time is over. You're going to wake up one day, or either you're not going to wake up one day, and realize it's over. I had a chance, and I didn't do it. I look at my age now, and I think, God, what was I doing in my 20s and my 30s? What was I doing back then? Because all this time that I could have been doing more for you, that it was time for action, and I was, I was weighed down with other things. It's time to awake out of sleep. Cast off the things of darkness. And when you cast off the things of darkness, it says in verse 12, you put on the armor of light. That's him. You put on Jesus, the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, verse 13 says in the King James. That walk is the word for how you conduct your life. It doesn't mean just literally walking down a path. It means how do you conduct your life. Let us conduct our lives honestly. You say, well, that means I tell the truth all the time. It can mean that. That's one meaning. But it also means decently and with propriety. Does that mean you can't have any fun? We've been in here laughing all morning, have we not? We have had a beautiful time. Don't let the devil fool you. I'm going to tell you how he fooled me. Don't let him fool you by saying, you give your life to God, your fun is over. I heard that. I was a 16, 17, 18, 19 year old girl thinking, I know i got to give my life truly to God one day, but when I do, my life will be boring. 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 Such a lie of the devil. Some churches are boring, but I promise you this church won't be. And I promise you that living a life for God is not just about church. You're just here once or twice a week, some of us. I'm talking about your life won't be boring when you're flowing in the things of God. Don't let the devil lie to you. Let us walk honestly as in the daytime. Why does he say that as in the day? Because usually people do bad things at night. Why? Because nobody can sleep at night. I'll sneak out at night and nobody knows what I'm doing. I'm going to drive away late at night and nobody knows what I'm doing. They might see me in the daytime, but they may not see me at night. And what kinds of things is it that people are doing at night? The Bible says in the King James, rioting, but you heard what his said. His says wild parties. That's exactly what the Greek is. That rioting doesn't mean that you're out there blowing up stores or something, causing a riot. It means you're in just wild, crazy, drunken parties. That's what rioting, and it's, that's why drunkenness is with it, rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering, that's sexual promiscuity. I'm blown away today at how the church world thinks that all that's just okay. I have been guilty right here. I have been guilty of that. But I didn't think it was right for a second. The whole time I was guilty, I was thinking, oh, God, don't let me die today because I don't know if I'm really saved. I really was. I was like, God, don't let me die today. I didn't think for a second it was right. you got people today just thinking it's just okay. But that's fine. I'm here to tell you it is not okay. Whether it's me or whether it's you, it's not. He said, cast off those works of darkness. You don't need that, he said. Get rid of the chambering, the wantonness. You say, well, King James is so difficult. What is wantonness? It means some kind of a, of a way out there, crazy, indecent, immoral lifestyle. Looseness. That's what wantonness is. You know what blew me away? One of the Greek meanings of this word even means indecent bodily movements. Woo! Boy, how did that, that hit me right there. I didn't realize that. Now, not in strife and envying. Here's where it gets rubber meets the road. This affects almost everybody. Who in this room has never been in strife? She just laughed. Abigail, don't lie. Right behind the line right now. Who has never been in strife? Is there anybody? I just about got in strife this morning. 
The Bible says in Job, you shall decree a thing, and it shall be done. The Bible says that when you speak to a mountain, if you believe that you're going to have what you say, you're going to have what you say. You're going to have what you say. Do you realize that? Quit speaking negative about yourself. Even when you read these things, yes, you have to be honest and admit to God, God, I'm guilty of this. I'm guilty of this. But what's the next thing you do? You turn it around and you start to speak the words of God over yourself. I will flow in the love and the Spirit of God. I will not walk in looseness of life. I will not do these things of darkness. I shall not. You begin to proclaim it. The Bible speaks of God and says that when His Word goes forth, it never returns void. It shall accomplish that which it was sent to do. You have God within you if you're saved. And if you're not, you can have Him within you today. And when He's within you and you speak the Word, you're speaking it just like God. The Bible says about God, God who quickens the dead, and calls those things which be not as though they were. What are you not? Are there some of these things you're not moving in yet? Call those things which be not as though they were. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I don't see multitudes of people right now running down the street because they're hungry for God. I'm calling it into existence, though, by that word of God that says, God, who calls that which is not as though it were. I thank you, God, for the people in want to go rushing, rushing, God, to you. I thank you, God. Oh, Lord, you know me, God. I sometimes let myself open a door of strife. But I speak, I repent of that right now, God. And right now I speak and say, I will not walk in strife. Hallelujah. I will walk in the love of God. Begin to decree that over your life. Well, what difference does that make, Leslie? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You begin to speak the Word of God to yourself, and your body hears it, and your body begins to respond, and you become what you speak. A person who proclaims they're sick all the time, well, they're going to be. Proclaim and speak the Word of God. Chelsea, sing that to close us out. What I want you to do, those categories that I called out to you, I want you to ponder them one final time. If you don't believe in God, it's time for action today. And you make the choice and say, you know what I've seen and felt here today? There has to be a God. Number two, if you believe there is a God, but you've never committed to follow Jesus Christ, it's time for action for you today. Do it today. Whoever you are, do it. Commit today. Number three, if you are saved, but you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's time for action today. Do it today. Don't you leave this place till you're baptized in the Spirit. Number four, if you've done all of the above, but you find you're just not hungry and thirsty for God the way you know you ought to be, don't you leave here today till you are. How can you do it? You begin to proclaim, I thank you, God, that I hunger for you. I thirst for you. I thank you, God. I speak of that into my life. I hunger and I thirst for you, God. You keep saying it and you will eventually realize, oh, it's true. If you've already done all of these things and you feel that you are passionate for God, there's farther you can go. Ask Him to set you on fire. Oh, Jesus. Ask Him today to set you on fire. God, set me on fire. I think it was John Wesley who they said, how do you attract such crowds? He said, I set myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. And that should be every one of us. Except we say, God set us on fire. The people will come to the burning of your life, God. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm telling you, if you're in one of those categories and everybody is, and you need prayer this morning, don't you leave till you let me pray for you. you humble yourself. Stand up and say, it's me. Pray for me, Leslie. Pray for me. And I want y'all to pray for me. <coughs> In fact, <coughs> Chelsea, you can sing that song. And while she sings it, I'm going to tell you, I think I am passionate about God, but I'm not passionate enough. I want to be set on fire. Oh, set on, I need y'all to pray for me. Somebody pray for me. 
somebody that feels led, lay hands on me. I'm going to be set on fire. I'm going to be baptized, not just with the Holy Ghost. I've had that happen, but with fire. Ooh, Jesus. Somebody, pray for me. Come on, who is it? Somebody come lay hands on me. Well, I want the fire, too. We pray for each other. Lord. Thank you, Lord.
sleep till you get it. Cry out to the Lord. Oh, the Father wants you and you call. This is the voice of the Lord. I'm 
mark it down in my memory or on paper. July 3rd, 2016, I, I made a change. I surrendered to God in some area of my life. I surrendered. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Unless the Lord tell me to speak something else, I'm going to sit down and just let the Holy Ghost do a work. When you need to leave, you leave. There's no benediction. Your benediction is surrender to God leave this place changed. If you don't feel changed, you continue to speak that you are. Whatever you ask for prayer for, for me or personally, you continue to speak it, but it's happened. It has happened. Oh, Jesus. If you need prayer, I still will, though. Thank you. 